All right, so we have started recording. Dolly. Welcome to episode eight. Um, <laughs> let me take a sip of my beer. Hold on. Okay, amazing. So, guys, we haven't spoken in such a long time. Before the plague befell our world, um, there was no pandemic. And it was a very different time. Right now, for example, is the first episode where Ale and I are not in the same place at all. She is in Orlando and I'm in Miami. And it took quite a while, but we, we finally did it. And boy, do we have uh, the update for you guys. Um, so much shit. But uh, we wanted to start off the episode with a nod to all the things that happened in 2020 starting with the floods in Indonesia, the wildfires in Australia, Kobe and his daughter, Gigi, and their death in the helicopter, the coronavirus spilling out from Wuhan, quarantine, which affected the entire world. Um, Most famously, the Italian lockdowns where people were singing in the streets, the murder of George Floyd, the Beirut blast, we saw plagues, we saw locusts, frogs, cicadas, which happened in very 13 fucking years. We got them in 2020. Um, I could just keep going on. I'm pretty sure the Pentagon confirmed aliens. Doing the thing. Anything else on the list? Uh, Tiger King and murder hornets. I was going to pick between Ooh. them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a pick your death. like Right. Kind of twisted game. <laughs> Oh, in good news, though, uh, Uh the second person ever um, to be cured of HIV was, you know, that was achieved this year. So that's a good thing. Yay. And I think that I think us achieving the ability to be like, yeah, the aliens are a thing. Look at this weird hovercraft that that um, that that happened. I I learned so much personally about aliens and about outer space and about conspiracies (sighs) and, and all of these things this year because of my girlfriend oh oh spoiler alert spoiler alert. i put hot sauce in my eye no ah. sana sana do you need water i wish i was in like school when they had the little showers and like kept in chemistry uh-huh. class oh yeah it's fine okay you got a tiktok following that happened a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yes Anyway, the TikTok algorithm started getting me correct, and they started sending me videos of um, girls uh, from Iran posting videos and, like, crying and being like, I am so angry and I am so jealous because all of you people in America are living my dream life. At least you get to vote. At least you get to do whatever you want. At least you get to protest. And then she was like, it was... It was a point, it's like, you know what, Shit's, shit has its issues here, shit has problems here, but there are so many places where there's so much less, and where they aspire mm-hmm. to come here, and I'm just yeah. one of, I'm personally one of the people that's just very against people shit-talking the United States just because of the person that runs it. Is it going to be just another four years of people shit-talking America because they think it's going to be a socialist country? Yeah, it's getting to the point where people are going to start seeing how similar each side is when they are drowned in just hate and anger towards the other person. This political division that is weird to me. It's weird how in America you have like Republicans and Democrats and it's such a like, oh, you're either this or that. Like very few people talk about independence, which you are an independent outside like in mexico we have we have like political parties but it's not that i don't know it wasn't like that it's not like sports teams oh. yeah ah, it's very much it's very like sports teams here in the u.s like i don't like that that where you say i'm a democrat and then they put all of these things on you the full label because most of america most of america is 80 percent one party and 20% the other you know what I'm saying like Mm -hmm. and it's kind of hilarious that his whole thing was Mm -hmm. you're like you're fired (laughs) (laughs) you're actually getting fired fired (laughs) yeah no you're fired you know I hate the like us versus them mentality 
um, just as importantly, there are COVID spikes now. Yeah. I got COVID through my brother because my brother went to the gym. He got it, gave it to me. And once it's in the house, it kind of just went over and got my entire family, mm-hmm. my stepdad, my mom, and it even got Lewis's household. So we, for the first time in like five years, could not see each other for a month. That was wow. like heartbreaking. It was terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we all survived. No one had to go to the hospital. No one, you know, we had fevers. We had, we, we felt it hit us, but definitely not as hard as it's hit like certain family friends, mm-hmm. you know, being in a coma and did not come out of it. Mm-hmm. But um, we're, we're definitely blessed that we came out of it. And uh, you guys are like patient zero. You guys have been... you Because I am, I am literally <sighs> like baffled how we haven't gotten it. Okay, let me get the beer. Hold on. You intro that and then we'll go into it because it's a good way of introducing how everything started. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're opening, we're, we have a beer. Itch, you have a beer, right? Is that a beer? Have this moment while we drink it to honor um, everything that we've been going through through this past 2020. Just kind of like to honor 2020, the good, the bad, the ugly, the mental health breakdowns. Absolutely. Everything. Everyone ha- always shits on every single year. I remember 2016 was the yeah. worst day, was the, was so, the worst yeah. year and all these. <laughs> I mean, this one kind of takes the fucking cake being the yeah. pandemic year and it makes all the other years look like little baby nothing years. Yeah. And nothing ever happened. <laughs> Drink it, ho. Right? Like, yeah. This one, this year has tested families. This year has tested friendships. This year has come with divorces, new relationships. This year, a tidal wave of change. So here is the toast to that. So here's the toast to that. Cling. One, two, three. Cling. Cheers. Cheers <laughs> to 2020. Mm-hmm. both having a Michelob Ultra. Wait, actually, yeah, that's true. Wow. Amazing. What a coincidence. Amazing. So let us take you back through the sands of time to March 2020. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Ale, take it from here. Okay. Well, um, yeah, so yeah, now is the part where we'll tell you what the hell happened to us <laughs> through this year? <laughs> okay, so March 2020, um, I was living in Miami in my ex-husband's house while we were going through the divorce. We had been going through it for like more than a year already. We were like signing papers. I don't know what I was doing. I was doing a lot of TikToks. Um just doing my thing um I already had gotten the idea of moving to Orlando I wanted to move to Los Angeles to LA um and I was gonna do that but I don't know I I just by chances of like destiny or whatever I ended up having like a, a a job in Orlando so when I came to do that job by myself I felt very connected to the city I I kind of toyed with the idea of moving here because I was like, okay, so I want to move away from my old life. I want to kind of like have a fresh start. I was just thinking about it, but nothing concrete, nothing settled. And then just by, again, destiny, I started talking to this amazing person um, called Ricky uh, through TikTok. And it was nothing that I was searching for or looking for it's the your typical like thing story of I won't say I'm in love (laughs) yeah it's your typical story of 
of like, oh, I'm going to be single for a while and I'm not going to be into anything and I'm not going to get into any relationships because I'm going to be focusing on myself like typical. That's where I was. And, and for me, it was just casual, you know, like, I don't know. I'm like not even divorced officially yet you know I wasn't you don't know how to swim in those waters I, exactly so I was just kind of like dipping my toes in the gay water <laughs> just to see what's up it was a very erotic seduction <laughs> like, I don't know if things are like this in the gay community in general or what <laughs> But yeah, I essentially was- remember it was like that, but not necessarily just because of her. I think <laughs> there was a couple very, very presumptuous questions asked from you. I mean, everybody, everybody asked questions. <laughs> okay, basically, I asked, I asked them if they were a top or a bottom, and then from there, they were like, "Oh, okay, this bitch wants to." I'm gonna tell you, baby. Tell you what I am, and then she showed me. Um, so, where I kept being like, you know, this is like I'm going through a divorce. Like, this is not serious. This is just this is just casual, right? No Fluid feelings. No. Fluid, can't, fluid. Can't can't catch feelings. Can't catch feelings through FaceTime. Face yeah. Like what? <laughs> they, what, okay. what made you fall in love? Like what was that moment where you're like, oh, <laughs> okay. To start with, I started talking to this girl because she's gorgeous. So they are okay with they, them pronouns, but also they're okay with he, him, and she, her. So basically, she she doesn't care. Okay, so I literally, can I confess to something? She posted a picture, Mm -hmm. and I wrote, you, like, hell yeah, girl. And then I was like, I deleted it really quickly. And I wrote, (laughs) hell yeah, dude. And I'm like, fuck, I feel like a father. Like, I feel like I don't know... (laughs) (laughs) so no it's really easy with Ricky because they literally don't care this is their life like I'm I've been with them for a while and I see how it happens every day almost like people think that they're a boy so because they present very masculine and boy a pretty boy yeah like a pretty boy and she's very handsome and pretty at the same time I don't know I love them Um, So I was, you know, obviously like physically attracted, but then once we started talking and talking and then we never stopped talking, like we would go to a point where we were like FaceTiming each other and we wouldn't hang up in like three days. Like the call was like 72 hours long, like, (laughs) and we would just hang up because it got caught and then we'd like call each other right back and like that, like we were always connected to each other. And I was, you know, it was weird because like there was always a continuous conversation or were you just staring at each other? No, <laughs> we're not just staring. We were not just staring. We were always talking. So that's how remember that this is exactly as the pandemic was hitting. Yeah. So this it is was. when when they were living in Wyoming, by the way, just so you know. They were living in Wyoming and, and this is both of us we got sick the same week. Uh, which was like two weeks before the pandemic like officially hit or whatever. When it hit, Ricky got um, uh, fired because she missed work because she was sick. So <laughs> they were unemployed. And then I, I was working, I was working at ThinkGeek, but because when the pandemic hit, they like, right. like let us go sort of indefinitely Mm -hmm. so I also was unemployed so Ricky and I were unemployed in our houses all day the world went on a summer vacation yeah everybody just stopped working like the world stopped for a while and and Ricky and I were just at home doing nothing but talking to each other like literally the whole day when we say like oh we met at this point and then by this point we were already moving together People is like, oh my God, that's so, like, you don't know this person, that's so extreme. But in reality, it's like, we got, like, like knowledge of each other because we never stopped talking for, like, literally weeks while the pandemic was hitting, like, the first weeks of the pandemic. Do y'all remember what you were doing? You guys like, got in, like, like... Yeah, it was like a crash course. She would, like, tell me all of her wild stories and deepest secrets and, and all of these things. And then I did the same. So that's how we, that's how we transform from something casual 
to something real and deep and like I fucking caught the feelings but I couldn't I couldn't resist we cut the feelings we cut the feelings with literally like we, we kind of like reacted a little bit to to what was happening with the world and the pandemic uh, opportunities came before us that we were like we got to do this now or never we don't like there was a lot of uncertainty we didn't know if the borders were going to close and when we were going to be able to meet if at all ever i was at this point also going through the divorce uh, we had a set date that we were going to go like before the judge which was which was the final step in our divorce we were going to walk out of that courtroom as two separate single people again that was the date but that was when COVID hit so the day got postponed because all of like the court meetings or whatever that weren't like urgent got postponed do you remember the exact day no not the exact day um but I was I was like we were trapped in this limbo of like literally like we want to get divorced but we can't (laughs) and it's like what the fuck you know I I was also I was also like trying to plan to look for like my having my own place like where am I gonna go from here where am I gonna leave, um, I didn't have a full time job at the time so I wasn't even sure how I was gonna be able to afford to live by myself I was like thinking about looking for roommates and all of these things and they just made us like go to the office to sign the final papers and then that's it like we didn't have to talk to nobody they kind of like simplified the process for us. Well, this is happening, the borders are closing, lockdown, everything's chaos, we don't know, uncertainty. And then Ricky gets laid off, and then uh, just by talking to them well, every day... Well, she gets laid off a second time, she found something else, and then... Yeah, she had found another job, and then they fire her, because she got to work, to work late one time. I could tell that Ricky was kind of, like, unhappy, I don't know how it happens, but we were like, okay, I need to get out of here. You need to get out of there. Where do we go? Like, let's just go. Fuck it. And Ricky was like, okay, with literally, she like packed all of her life and her possessions into her trailblazer and drove from Wyoming to Florida for like two, almost three days straight. That felt like within two weeks of you guys talking. That felt like... <clears throat> yeah. That yeah. Was... Yeah. Like I said, it felt super quick because of the whole thing. We yeah. did nothing but talk and then it happened. I, I got her a room at uh, the extended stay because it was like the cheapest that I could find and that was kind of like okay. Because she was like, I don't care if I have to live in my car. I've done it before. Like... The plan was for her to come here, try to get a job as quickly as possible, and then she would, you know, pay for her own, like, hotel room or whatever. But she got here, and (laughs) when we met, it was, like, very, like, a movie, you know. I saw them, and I ran, and I realized that they were, like, my height, which was weird. I don't know. You were expecting her to be taller, or? Uh Uh-huh, yeah. I expected (laughs) them to be taller. Um, And basically, ever since that day, we haven't been apart. Like, I didn't plan on it, but, like, that was the day that I basically moved out of the house. Because that night, I spent it at the hotel with her. And then ever since, like, I kept going, I kept just going back to Marlon's house to, like, get a couple clothes and, like, a change of clothes for, like, a few more days. Right. And because then, at that point, at that point, yeah, the, he already knew that you were with Ricky. Yes, yes, um, he knew, which was not the best, but it was like a struggle, and we were living. That was in a that chapter, hotel. dude. That that chapter. was a whole chapter. Yeah, we were in that hotel for about three months, I think, um, and and it, but it was like. We were living like day by day. Like we, 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 for those three months, we never knew if we were going to make it, make enough money for like another night. We would yeah. work all day doing deliveries because we're both unemployed. It's the middle of COVID. Everything's closed. There's like, we're applying to jobs like crazy, but nobody's hiring. Everybody's just getting fired. The opposite. Right. 
So it was like literal like crisis. The only thing that we could, so we signed up to all these delivery services. We literally were doing DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, Instacart, Shopper, all of them, like anything that we could grab. Spons. <laughs> yeah, like hello. And that's how we would like try to make the 64 bucks that we needed for the night at the hotel. And we were hungry for a while. Sometimes uh, we accepted some like leftover food from Marlon sometimes or from friends. Um, obviously, with the help of my family, also they sent, sent us some money sometimes to like cover for the hotel. Like without them, I don't know how, what we would have done. And that's how we miraculously like survived. Um, and at the same time, we're like falling in love. So it's this horrible situation, but like in our little bubble, like getting to know each other and falling in love with each other. And like, I took her to um, like the, at the cemetery. cemetery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was such a cute <laughs> little spot. Yo, those mosquitoes were oh, yeah. uh, Jurassic is oh, yeah. the best way that I could describe them. <laughs> yeah. We had our spot at the cemetery. It's a lovely old old cemetery in miami but it was full of mosquitoes so we all we always brought like off spray with us and stuff but still so that's how we lived for like those three four months but nothing was happening and so one day we just got fed up and we decided to like i don't know we, we were like we gotta do something we gotta like try to incite some change try something new try another area and this is where we decided to move to Orlando. We're like, let's just rip the Band-Aid off and let's just, you know, whatever we're doing here, we can literally do anywhere. So let's just go and do it in Orlando. We'll get a hotel over there and we'll keep doing the deliveries and we'll apply two jobs over there, inshallah. We said goodbye to all my friends. And, and then we got here and we, we spent another kind of like another month at the hotel. But that was even harder because the room that they put us on in, in, in this hotel in Orlando, I'm convinced that it was covered in mold or mildew, like underneath. Like asbestos? Yeah, like under the carpet and on, like behind the walls. Like I could feel it. I could smell it. And then I have allergies and asthma. So it literally almost killed me. Like oh we spent... God that we, we, they changed the room. So at the beginning it was okay. But then when we moved to that one for the last week that we were there, we were only in that room for a week and I had to do my nebulizer treatment like three times I a day. remember that. That's a, that's a nightmare. But I remember you would post the videos like on, yeah. on social, like another night with the nebulizer. But yeah. yeah. I literally was asphyxiating in that fucking room. At this point in time, we were already like look, applying to apartments. So I was like, let's just get the fuck out of here and into an apartment. Like, I just want to stop living this hotel life that was draining our money as well. Was it the job that you found first or the apartment that you found first in Orlando? So it was the job. So, and that was also another like destiny planet aligning thing because I had applied for uh, a content writer position at the same company that Gabs used to work at. <laughs> yeah, and I never thought I would like get it. It was, you know, I was like desperate applying, you know, I was applying to anything and everything and in, in retail and in like a film, like all the areas. Like that was one of those that I like applied like while I was doing my applying sprees and then I get a call back and then I get an interview. At the end of the interview, I felt like it went well, but the the person said like, oh, I still have like a couple more person, like people to interview, we'll let you know. So I was like, okay, we'll let you know at the end of the week. And then the end of the week arrived and they didn't let me know. So I thought that it was a no, you know, I was like, oh, okay, well, I didn't get it, whatever. And then this is the moment where we decided to move to Orlando. And then literally, did they before the day that we were moving oh like, my god we went to the park when we went yes. to the fucking park yeah so we were gonna move i don't know like a saturday and like on a, on a thursday night i get an email from them saying like we want to offer you the position and shalala shalala and their offices are obviously in miami so i was like oh my god what the fuck like i'm literally with one foot in orlando already like what what do i do so kind of like overwhelmed and I don't know I was like I don't care fuck it like ni modo 
And I, I told him, like, I'm sorry, but I'm moving to Orlando. Like, I can't take the position. Like, too bad. But thank you for the opportunity. But I kind of, like, rejected them and was like, I'm moving to Orlando. And then, like, two hours passed. And then I get another email from HR, from the HR person, saying, like, I have talked to the supervisor or whatever, and we've talked about it, and we decided to offer you the position remotely so that you can, if you want it, like you can accept it and you can work from from home and like you can be in Orlando and still like get the position and like you know we can still hire you and I was like oh my god girl when that happened you don't understand the amount the emotional roller coaster that I went through because (laughs) like I left that job because I had to soul search but that was the best fucking job I've ever had that was such a good job when it comes to the money when it comes to the benefits everything for being there for you so when I heard that you were getting in, I was like, yes, girl, they'll take care of you. <laughs> so when you said you dropped it, I was like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> and then when I heard they were like keeping you on, I'm like, wow, you're that, how does that happen? Where, what is the, what are the odds? What is that? Yeah, honestly. Gee. It honestly is like some universe bullshit, like situation. High roll, dude. Yeah. High roll because that was like wow okay so obviously when they offered me this i was like um yes please they were like full position we'll be paying you 13 dollars an hour for the first 90 days and then we'll give you a raise and i was like what yes like this you gotta understand guys this is the first time that i've had a full-time quote-unquote normal job like office like nine to five full-time with benefits 401k like insurance all of these like adult things like adult like serious job this is the first time and you got it in 2020 at home in the best bro right yeah and that's another thing that i'm grateful for that i'm like i get to experience this and i'm in the comfortability of my house like my home like i never a day goes by without me like appreciating that because for my mental health it's been key it's been key and also they are super accommodating and understanding of mental health and other like healthy because I, I go to the doctor a lot okay I'm sick all the time I have allergies I have asthma I get sick like my immune system is not okay I always get sick I always have a doctor's appointments and I always have anxiety about asking for days off of work because I always feel that they think that I'm bullshitting them and I just want to like go party or something. I don't know. It's irrational, but I always have this fear, but right. never like in, in where, I, where we work at, where we, <laughs> where I work. Well, I still freelance. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. So in this place, in this amazing company, they are so understanding. And like anytime that I've been like, I can't, like I have this, like I had cramps, right? I had like really bad cramps. Uh, Cause I get really bad cramps the first day. Couldn't. I was like, I'm literally doing nothing. I'm useless. I'm just like in the bathroom and like riddling with pain. Um, so I just tell my boss like, Hey, I don't feel really good. Can I? And they're like, Yeah, sure. Just let them know and like use your pay time off so you don't lose money. And they're like so nice and accommodating. And I literally, I've literally cried. Like I've cried being like, I cannot. <laughs> they're so nice. <laughs> like I literally one day I asked them. I had to clock out because not me, Ricky was having a mental breakdown, like l- literally f- full blown. Mm-hmm. And I needed to be there for her and I couldn't. So I, I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if they believe in mental health or not, but I'm going to try it. And I tried and I, I was like, I'm so sorry. My partner is having a mental breakdown. I will, I will like repay the hours. I, I'm sorry. And they were like, no, of course, please. We want you to be okay. Like, let us know if you're okay. And then the next day they like check with me again. Like, are you guys okay? Like if you need to talk, like they're so. They're amazing. Listen, amazing. I've had to, I've had to run out of that office because my, when Morty was having his seizures, mm. I, I, I would only get a phone call and I had to stand up. It's like my dog's getting seizures. She's like, go, 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 go. And like yeah. they, they understood. Like mind you, I was yeah. there, I was with them for like a for a while, but like they mm-hmm. are human first. They are so blessed, blessed with this job that c- came to my lap, to my life. With that job, we were able to move to Orlando and and get into a really, really nice apartment complex. 
Ricky got a job here. She had this like previous job that she she was there, but she wasn't even there for 90 days. She got I think she was there for like two months, and then they let her go again because like she asked for a couple days off, to told her that she was unreliable and something, and they let they just ended up let, letting her go. Um, again, we were like back to one income, and struggling with the money and stress and all that but on our free time and i say free time <laughs> quote unquote uh ricky and i launched our gaming channel with this we're both gamers pew, pew, pew. yeah <laughs> and and we decided to just go for it and now we're like full like dedicating our time and efforts to twitch twitch.tv slash mams gaming <laughs> go follow I'm trying to trick my iMac into thinking that it's a PC and then down. I don't know. I'm trying to make it happen. Oh boy. We'll see. Be careful hacking it. I've tried to do it before and I've busted my, my Mac before. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I'm trying. I don't know. It's I like a whole it partition that. thing. And yeah. So here we are. Um, unfortunately, like I was um, having therapy and therapy sessions once every two weeks. I was missing some of them and I, like I still had to pay for them and like I couldn't really afford it. So I had to put a pause in my therapy sessions just just for a while. You know, I still got the pills and I'm kind of like doing everything. I'm doing yoga. I'm trying to like stay Dude, mindful. Dude, good on you. I have not done yoga since you've been gone. <laughs> no. <laughs> and when I stop doing yoga, I feel it. Like I feel my body go to like 70 years old like <laughs> fucking broke i hear um, you guys just, it's just a whole other topic but like just to mention it like being in a relationship with another woman it's its own it's different than a guy struggle that's gotta <laughs> be its own episode dude like a, a second period more hormones more emotions and then like she also has mental health issues so it's like we've had to like literally learn how to deal with each other's like demons and it's like scary you know <laughs> oh no yeah but a it's worth it <laughs> you, you here's the open yeah yeah it's, it's my life that is me that is i i have transformed into this butterfly <laughs> ready for 2021 so now I would like to know about gaps. Catch us up. Okay. So as of March, um, I kind of just have a list of things. I got my degrees. The two degrees that I set out to do, I got them. My film degree and my psychology degree. So check mark on those. My graduation is on the 12th. I got my websites going. So mm. I have my badthoughts.studio website, which yeah. showcases all of my kind of just film projects and it showcases Awkward and Depressed. And that's basically kind of just my landing page for all of um, our productions, things that we've made, things that we will make in the future. I've got my acting website, which is gabriellealexander.com, which has just my demo reel. So it looks all professional and like, you know, you know, portfolio-y and whatever. I have a lot more work now. I was very sad and very anxious for a long time because I wasn't it was hard to not just leave work, but to learn how to do work that you have never done before. Yeah. Like I did a little bit of retail with Spirit and I, I continued to do like freelance editing gigs, but I really had no idea how to make money in other ways. And it didn't come to pass until recently where I kind of just started forcing myself into not accepting because the the need for money continues the bills still come the the need for me to survive is still there at the end of every month and i've had some months where i am i am like trembling and terrified and i don't know if i'm gonna have enough and you know i've had to cancel subscriptions and i've had to oh, move yeah. my money around and i've had yeah. to when that stimulus came around i was like hot yeah. dog yeah <laughs> that helped a lot those trump books <laughs> fucking they they filled a void because i was i was about to go under and um 
Mm -hmm. And yeah, there was always, there always, every time I thought there wouldn't be enough, there, there, there managed to be just enough, whether it was my, my brother or my boyfriend coming in to save me or like even family members, like shooting a couple bucks my way, pity on my soul, you know, doing the whole artist thing and also having the, the, not exactly the mental fortitude to believe in yourself while no one else is believing in you. Mm -hmm. Um, I had happy Monday come out, which was huge for me. I was sitting on happy Monday for so long. Um, it's got like 3000 something views. So it's not bad for something that's like an hour long. I wasn't expecting that much. Yeah. I was, I was pretty happy with that. I worked on that a lot and that's kind of like I maybe my proudest thing because it's kind of like the little memoir of like that chapter of my life okay, before yeah. I left. Ugh, I love that video. It always like whenever <gasps> I saw it a couple of times before it was released, uh, a couple of versions, and I always ended up super inspired. So I'm like, yeah. I, I had to. That. I put this girl through so many versions of Happy Monday because <laughs> like I was like, it's not ready, it's not ready, it's not ready, and I just kept like chopping it and chopping it and chopping it, but. Yeah you know, it finally got out and I I really wanted it to do, I wanted it to come out for my birthday because I realized that there is some footage that cycles through like three birthdays and I was coming across (laughs) another birthday. Uh And I was like, oh no, this is not going to be like four years of this (laughs) shit. This thing's going to come out in 2020. It's over. It's out. Yeah. So that definitely was my push. Um, I opened... I opened my YouTube merch shop. I started doing the Amazon influencer program. Um, I started doing channel memberships. This this year really came with a lot of like uh, allow the the hammer and the nail on the things for the YouTube channel to continue. I you know wasn't posting for some reactions for a while. I got my first sponsor sponsorship with the Yay. coldest. Uh-huh. Um and. And yeah, it's just since October, I've kind of, everything I had planned for 2020 got canceled. Mm -hmm. I had a bunch of auditions. I had a bunch of short films. I had a bunch of shit that I was going to do and it all got canceled because of COVID. My entire family got COVID. I got COVID, (laughs) made it out. But, you know, now is the first time that I'm starting to be able to work again. Like for Halloween, I did this haunted house thing. And now for Christmas, I'm going to do this like Rudolph thing. And I'm like (laughs) terrified because it's like a full on, full on like theater thing. Uh So it's like me soloing and it's just going to, I'm just freaking out right now about it. But (laughs) that sounds cool. I'm excited because I'm making money doing the thing I said I was going to do. So it's like, (laughs) bro, if you can't handle this, you can't handle Broadway. You know what I'm saying? Uh So you got to do this. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of, a lot of, uh, building myself and like everything that I was crying over and terrified of through, through 2019 came to slow fruition and like each building block started setting itself up in 2020. I got representation, uh, an agent, which I'm still waiting on that contract. So I'm a free, I'm a free actress right now, but technically I have an agent. Yeah, that's and the, and I mean the podcast is still going. Everything's still very alive and moving. Eee! That's my update. So you mentioned something about moving to. You had options, California yeah. or talk about that. Why California when, or Georgia? Because uh-huh. um, my representation is telling me that I do really, really well in Georgia. And they're asking if I have a Georgia address that, that they know of so that they could submit me to stuff. Mm. Um, but I don't know where to find a Georgia address right now. And I'm not, I'm not living there. But I'm also doing FIU right now. I'm doing psychology. I'm going to start in the spring. So I'm also doing Mm. kind of half and half so it's kind of like right now I'm waiting for the opportunity to come Mm -hmm. and I guess for me to make the jump I've been like like sifting through my stuff like throwing things away little by little so I have barely anything to take with me when it is time to move 
Okay. Um, but I feel like it's going to come, especially in 2021. Like, 21 is my number. Okay. 21 is my fucking number. It has been my number <laughs> my entire life. So this, I, I have high hopes for 2021. <laughs> 2021 has to be somehow better. <laughs> I, for me, it's always, that's my favorite number. That's my birthday number. Mm. That's like, it's my go-to. So guys, we have come to the very end of episode eight. And next episode is our last. It'll be episode nine. It'll be the season finale of yeah. the Awkward and Depressed podcast season one. Pum, pum, pum. And it also makes way for season two. Season two is going to come at you in a very, very different light. Season one was all about us, all about our lives, our experiences, and we got really uh, personal with you guys. And now in season two, it's going to be all about you. We're going to take comments, questions, and your deepest confessions, and we're going to read them out loud for all to hear. Yeah, it's going to be more of an advice show. It's going to be more circled around comments and uh, real uh, hard stories, your deepest secrets. We're going to be receiving maybe arguments, maybe things you've had uh, kept quiet, maybe things that you want to announce and hear out loud on air. It's going to be all about you next season. So just go ahead and leave us comments, follow us, and all the things. Once again, we'd like to thank our patrons, Tyler, David, Daniel, Christian, JD, and Ian. You guys make our world go round. Yes. Thank you so much for supporting our show. Thank you, because without you, we would not be able to continue. And if you'd like your name read on the show, go ahead and go to patreon.com, look for the Awkward and Depressed podcast, and become a patron. We've got exclusive content on there. We've got a bunch of wallpapers, a bunch of goodies, and um, we're about to mail out some gifts. Yeah. If you were ever a patron of us, your name is going to appear in the end of season t-shirt. And if you are currently our patron, you will be getting that t-shirt in the mail. Yes. Yeah, so make yeah. sure that if you are a patron on Patreon, that you have your address on there. We did it. That's it. That's our episode. That's okay. episode eight. Oh, yay. That's our first remote episode. For coming me. to you live from Miami. And then you got to go come in from you live from. Okay. So I'm going to go. Okay. Ready? Coming at you live from Miami. Hey, coming at you live from Orlando. It's the Awkward and Depressed Podcast <laughs> with Gabs and Alex. <laughs> In the middle of a pandemic. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that's a hint for the limited edition shirt. All right, guys. Well, thank you again and see you in the next episode. Hope you have a great day. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for listening to the Awkward and Depressed podcast, whether it was on Spotify or iTunes or even Google Play if you're an Android person. It's okay. We like you guys too. Ratings are extremely valuable for our growth as a podcast, so please go on and leave us a review. You can support the podcast by becoming our Patreons. Visit patreon.com slash awkward and depressed, where you'll find different tiers that will give you special perks and exclusive content. Your support will ensure the next episode. Follow all of the podcast updates on social media. We have Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Awk and Dep. That's A-W-K-N-D-E-P. Awk and Dep. And make sure to stalk me on all socials on youtube.com slash muted alpha behavior or at the muted alpha on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And you can stalk me, Ale, at youtube.com slash Ale from the heart. That's A-L-E from the heart all together. Follow me on my social media on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Ale from the heart. I'm Ale from the heart all across the social media, all over the place. <laughs> Ale from the, the heart. Yeah. the brand.